No one can change what's happened in the past. But maybe I can do something to make up for it. To help you get a new start. Have Gun. Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Ah, good evening, Mr. Paladin. Ooh, hey boy, you're all dressed up. Well, that's right, this is your night off. Where are you going? Oh, Mr. Paladin, big party. Oh? Uh, Celestial Dragon Society Clubhouse. Yeah, sounds like fun. Oh, Isa, uh, you know about mortgage on Celestial Dragon Society Clubhouse? Uh-huh. Well, um, we don't have money to pay off mortgage, so hey, boy, get fine idea. What was that? Hey, boy, figure uh, everybody in society buy ticket on big Chinese lottery. Somebody sure to win, and then they give money for mortgage. That's a great idea. If it works. Oh, I drew a lottery yesterday. <laughs> well, what do you know? So now you're celebrating with a mortgage-burning party, huh? Uh, no, not exactly. No? Nobody win. Ah, that's too bad. Well, that figures. Well, everybody's sad. They sit around clubhouse, tear up lottery tickets, make big pile of papers on floor. Really disappointed, huh? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Lee Kung say, look what we have for hey boy's big idea. Nothing but pile of confetti. Uh, yes, but I, I don't understand, then, what it is you're celebrating. Oh, you can't let confetti go to waste. Have biggie party. You like to come to party, Mr. Paladin? Oh, I'd love to, hey, boy, but I'm leaving in an hour for Phoenix in Arizona Territory. But have a good time. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you have a good time, too. In the air. On the sea, on the highway, the man in command must be awake and alert. And Nodo's Stay Awake tablets help you stay in command when you slide behind the wheel of your car and move more than a ton of automobile into highway traffic. You see, monotonous driving can make you drowsy no matter how much sleep you get. And driving and dozing just don't mix. But millions of times a year, safe no-dose helps keep drivers awake and alert. How does no-dose do it? Ask your doctor. He'll tell you that no-dose contains a safe and accurate amount of caffeine, the same refreshing stimulant you get in your coffee or tea. But safe no-dose acts faster, is handier and more reliable. Best of all, it is not habit-forming. Yes, no-dose is so safe, it is legally sold on a national basis without a prescription. Get no-dose stay-awake tablets today. It could save your life. I rode out of the desert into a narrow canyon that trapped a steaming, muggy heat, a sure sign of recent flash floods. So when I finally looked down on the Gila Valley, I wasn't surprised to see the river swollen and churning with the swift current. All the way from Yuma, I had seen fresh wagon tracks, and now I saw the wagon itself at the river banks attempting to make a crossing. It was a spring wagon, loaded with household goods. Man and woman rode the seat. The driver whipped the horse into the stream and the current boiled up around its belly. And then suddenly the wagon swayed and lifted and the end swung downward with the pull of the water. And then it overturned. And by the time I was able to reach them, the angry water was forcing the struggling woman downstream. Oh, oh, now, oh, 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 keep that horse's head up. I'll get the lady. Preacher. She didn't get much water, but there's a nasty crack on the head from one of the boulders. Tricia. And why doesn't she speak to me? What are we going to do? I'm afraid it's concussion. We'll have to get her to a doctor in the nearest town. Well, I couldn't save the horse. Well, we'll have to see what we can do about getting the wagon out of there before it's damaged too much. My horse can pull it. 
We were on our way to Phoenix. I was, too. With, with those flash floods, I'll lay odds that road is out. All our belongings, everything we owned, gone. Yeah. Floating down the Gila River. That's how it is with me. Nothing goes the way it ought to. Now, come on. Let's see what we can do about that wagon. There's sure a lot of people in this little town. That means my guess was right. The main road to Phoenix was washed out. And where do you suppose we'll find a doctor? Well, yeah, there's the sheriff's office. We'll pull up there and ask him. Who now? Who? Oh, oh. well, that must be the sheriff that... Oh, no. What's the matter? Nothing. Uh, Sheriff? Yeah. What can I do for you? Well, where can we find a doctor? The doc's place is just off Main Street at the far end of town. Hey. Adam Foley. Hello, Heffler. You. And when you get to the far end of town, just keep on going. What are you talking about? I don't want Adam Foley in Gila Bend. This is my town. Don't be a fool, Heffler. Keep going. Look, I don't know what this is all about, but there's an injured woman in the wagon here, and we're taking her to the doctor. You take her to the doctor. He moves on, or I lock him up. Now, you got no right. I squared my debts. Not as far as I'm concerned, and I don't want you in this town. Well, you two can talk this out later. Come on, then. You heard me. Of all the people, Ed Heffler. What's eating him? Oh, I'll explain, Paladin, but can it wait? Let's look after Tricia first. Yeah, sure. Why can't it be just once that something would work out right? What did the doc say? It's concussion, all right. He can't tell yet how serious, but she's got to lie quiet, can't be moved. Well, I've been watching out the window here. The sheriff is standing guard by your wagon. You might as well know, Paladin. I just got out of Yuma prison. I did six years. It was Heffler put me there. What charge? Hold up, gold shipment at Bisbee. Heffler was sheriff there then. Well, if you've done your time, what's he sore about? Well, he holds a personal grudge. His brother was riding guard on that shipment. He got shot, and the man who shot him got away. Heffler always figured I should have paid for that shooting. He didn't figure six years was enough. Was it? It sure was. Trisha, Trisha waited for me. I, I've been out just a month. I lined up a job there in Phoenix. We were all set to make a fresh start. And right at the moment, I wouldn't say the prospects look too good. No, it'll work out, Adam. If I don't get to Phoenix, I lose my chance at the job, but I, I can't leave Trisha. All I got to my name is seven dollars. The the clothes I'm standing in and that patched up wagon. I'm sorry, Paladin. I hate to sound like a sorehead. I understand. The thing is, I'm not sure how to handle this. When when Heffler said move on, that's exactly what he meant. Look, if you've done your time, he's got no right. I know how he runs a town. He says my town, and that's it. Yeah, well. I'll go out and talk to him. You wait here for a while and go out the back way. I'll get a room at the hotel and meet you there. Now, there's no reason for you to get involved. I think you could use a hand. Thanks. I'll level with you, Paladin. I've spent a good deal of my life on the wrong side of the law, but I made a promise to Tricia, and I aim to keep it. Look, Paladin, I know this man. You don't. He's no good. Apparently, that stretch was a tough lesson for him, and he's trying to make a new start. They never change. He's a crook, and he'll always be a crook, and I don't want him in my town. But he can't leave his wife. Her injury may be very serious. Maybe that's why he can't leave. What do you mean? You notice the activity in town? Yeah. Since the washout on the main road, all traffic's been diverted through here, including the gold shipment. So? The way this town is situated, it... Might seem like easy pickings to some of the boys. But I'm way ahead of them. Oh, now, you surely don't think that Foley is... Like, it was only by accident that he came this way. Maybe it was. No, no, no. You're a suspicious man, Heffler. In my business, you learn to be. Just a while ago, a fellow they called Shorty Smith come into town. Why, does he like to climb it? Who's Shorty Smith? Hold up, man. Just got out of Yuma prison. He done his time alongside Adam Foley. Sheriff, will you allow me to be responsible for Foley while he's in town? Until his wife can be moved. Now, that's a real nice thought, but the law don't work that way, Paladin. All right. Will you deputize me? 
Make me legally responsible. Could be. That'd be a good idea. Let you find out how things look from behind the badge. One over the office. Well, I appreciate your confidence in me. Coming from a suspicious man like you is quite a compliment. You're no stranger to me, Paladin. You've built yourself quite a reputation. I'm anxious to see just how far those sentimental notions of yours go when that reputation's at stake. Hello, Adam. Paladin? Let's go have a beer, huh? That... Hey, wait a minute. What's that? Uh, well, that's a deputy sheriff badge. I don't get it. Uh, well, it's a pretty roundabout way to take care of it, but now you can stay with your wife. Well, I still don't get it. Well, sheriff Heffler is a very suspicious man. He doesn't trust you, and it's my legal responsibility now to see that you don't get out of line. Well, you took on quite a lot there, didn't you? I don't think so. Thanks. Um, there's just one thing, though. I hope you won't mind. What's that? I have to take your gun. Why? Heffler's orders. While you're in town. Well, I do mind. Come on, Adam. All right. Here. Thanks. What uh, does Heffler figure I might be up to? He's got an idea plans are being made to waylay gold shipments coming through here. Well, he does, well, huh? Like I say, he's a very suspicious man. Come on. Let's go have a beer and some lunch. I'm sorry, Paladin, I can't right now. I have to see a fellow. A friend of mine happens to be in town, a fellow I used to know. Shorty Smith. How did you know? How did you happen to jump on that name? I'm not sure. Maybe... Maybe it's wearing a badge. Sheriff, have a drink. No, thanks. You understand Paladin wearing that badge isn't just a game, it's a job. A responsibility goes with it. I realize that. I just want to let you know that it's going to be time to go to work pretty soon. Yeah? I had word that a $30,000 Wells Fargo shipment is coming through here. You think it won't come through safe? Two wanted outlaws were seen headed this way. With Adam Foley and Shorty Smith in town, it only seems sensible to be prepared. All right, what do we do? The stage will come over the pass just about daybreak. We'll meet it and escort it through town. I'll meet you at delivery. We'll ride out together. All right, Sheriff. Where's Foley? Well, after supper, he went down to the doctor to see his wife. Well, I guess now he's up in his room. Don't forget. He's your responsibility. I won't forget I'll see you at the livery before daybreak. Yes? Uh, doctor, I'm sorry to bother you this late at night. Uh, oh, Mr. Paladin, come in. Uh, thank you. I'm looking for Adam Foley. Is he here with his wife? No, Mr. Foley isn't here. He was here earlier. And I had to tell him the grave news. Grave news? What was that? That his wife needs surgery. It's urgent. Surgery? Brain surgery. There's only one man I know that I'd recommend to do the job. Bascom in St. Louis. He comes pretty high, but he's a good man. How did Foley take the news, Doctor? Well, it was a shock, of course, but he told me to go ahead and make the necessary arrangements. He did? Yes. Said he'd be prepared to take care of things from this end. I see. Thank you, Doctor. Mother, I'll never finish these curtains. Couldn't I finish them home on my machine? Would you? With the headaches and muscular aches and pains I've had lately, I don't do half I should. Nobody feels very ambitious with those discomforts. Better do something to get relief. But how? I'd try Doan's pills. Right. Doan's pills are an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. 
Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. <laughs> Sheriff. Hmm. Paladin. Didn't expect to see you before morning. I uh, know. I saw you here in the office, so I figured maybe I better come in and talk to you. And maybe, uh, eat a little crow. Yeah? You reminded me this evening that wearing the badge isn't a game. Well, I realize that, of course, but I'm afraid I did feel it was just the way around a situation. Sit down. Uh, yeah. What are you getting at, Paladin? I was sure you were wrong about Foley. I felt you were unnecessarily suspicious that your attitude toward him was a personal one. Nothing personal about it. My job is to be on the alert for lawbreakers. But what's on your mind exactly? Just this. I'm convinced that Foley came out of prison intending to go straight, but once a man's been on the wrong side of the law, it's easy to go that way again. He plotted out an idealistic, honest life for himself. Everything went wrong. But still, he'd made a promise to his wife. Yeah? And now, in order to save her life, he needs money. Lots of money. Fast. And I don't think he's going to care how he gets it. He was seen with Shorty Smith tonight. Well, I've just come from my room at the hotel. It had been broken into. His gun was missing. And I guess there isn't much question about his plans. I hate to admit it. I'm afraid you're right. But I still say he was driven to it. Now, Paladin, you make me sick. Look at all the people in the world dogged by hard luck who aren't driven to crime by it. You're right again, Huffler. Uh, well, come on. We got work to do. Uh, I suppose he's got your horse. Uh, matter of fact, he has. The livery stable man didn't know it was mine. It was pulling his wagon. You're a real credit to that badge, Paladin. Paladin, I think we can pull up here. Ooh. You think they'll try it on this pass? About the only spot where they'd have a chance to make a getaway. But from here, we can watch the road from the grade clear on through. Yep, yeah, there it is. Don't be afraid to pull that rifle when I give the word. Hey, Heffler, look. Huh? The men climbing up the slope. Where? Way, way back, you see? Yeah. Hey, Sheriff, that isn't Foley. No, it must be those wanted men I was telling you about. If they make a try from there, we'll have to move in on them. That's out of range of these rifles. Oh, they are. The coach is rounding that curve any minute, and they're getting ready to jump it. Come on. No, wait a minute. Look, from behind that rock, two other men. Yeah. Well, what do you know? And one of those men is Foley. That's Shorty Smith with him. I recognize Shorty. Right there, both of you. They got the drop on those hold-up men. You, you know a sheriff? Looks like they're doing our job for us. Yeah, well, they sure fooled me. Did you say there was a reward for those wanted men? Yeah, it sure is. It looks like Foley and Smith have earned it. Yeah, Paladin. Shorty and I talked this over when I ran into him here in town. So he'd heard about the job that was planned on that gold shipment. I'm sorry I had to take your horse without asking. That's all right. Yeah, that reward money will come in handy, won't it? Sure will. Take care of Tricia. You know, it seems like things might really be looking up. You know what? What? I can be mighty grateful to you. It means an awful lot to have somebody believe in you against all odds, like you did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I can be mighty grateful to you, too, Adam. Yeah? For a lesson. Well, what's that? <laughs> Don't be too ready to eat crow. Well, dear, now. Room all clean, Mr. 
Mr. Parletan. Thank you, Miss Wong. You have a good trip this time? Oh, yes. It was a satisfying trip, but I'm glad to be home. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to miss the Celestial Dragon Society party. Did you go? Oh, yes, sir. It was a good party? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> what did you do? Have a lot of refreshments and dance? We make puzzles. Make puzzles? Make puzzles, yes, sir. You see, there was a big pile of confetti on the floor. Everybody must sit down, put teeny pieces of paper together, make lottery tickets. Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand, Miss Wong. Oh. Well, hey, boy, find out somebody make a mistake. Somewhere in big pile of confetti is ticket that wins Chinese lottery. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes, that oh. was a nice party. Oh, my. Make lots of puzzles. Oh, Mr. Paladin, maybe you can come to party tomorrow night? Another party? Oh, yes, sir. Party to celebrate Celestial Dragon Society pay off mortgage on Clubhouse. Missy Wong finds all the pieces for a ticket that wins lots of money. <laughs> Good for you, Miss Wong. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Bergen, when I'm old enough to drive, can I have a car? Not unless you learn to care for it properly, Charlie. Oh, I'm a genius with a monkey wrench. The kids in our block say, if Charlie can't fix your car, there, there's something wrong with it. Yeah. Now, suppose you have a car. Yeah, let's make it a car then. A conservative red with yellow stripes. The color is not important. But if it's any GM car or truck, you should take it to your General Motors dealer for service. Oh, sure, I know. Oh, and what do you ask for? Have a credit? No. Guardian maintenance. Do you know what guardian maintenance means? It's the story of my life. Like you are my guardian and I, I maintain you. No, sir. Guardian maintenance is expert service performed by GM trained servicemen who have the proper tools and the factory approved parts to do the job right. And it's available to owners of Chevrolet cars and trucks, Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs, and GMC trucks. And red Corvettes with yellow stripes. <laughs> Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Barney Phillips, Ralph Moody, and Vic Perrin. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents... Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.